Hey, welcome back. This is Dave Galifianakis, and today we're between two speakers. Just kidding. I don't know if you've ever seen between two ferns of this frickin' genius. We're not gonna pay attention to the speaker anymore. It's only there for that lame joke that I just made, but I'm a dad, so I can do dad jokes, y'all, okay? All right, so today we're gonna be talking about, um, I should do between two speakers. I should do between two speakers. Let's get some a-hole friends of mine together. I'll sit between two speakers and talk audio video. Not the first time I've thought it. Um, which is why I did this dumb skit right here. So um, today I wanna to talk about crossovers, understanding crossovers, understanding how subs work into the system. Look, most of you guys are techie and you're gonna be like, roll your eyes and understand this, but some people just, DIYers just don't understand how to really like understand even what they're doing. You know, they just turn in dials and are reading menus and you know, they really understand where the sub plays into their system, right? So every speaker has a series of frequencies. So I'm gonna to try to layman term it a little bit. Um, I'll throw some numbers out there, but for the most part, it'll be understood by all. Your tweeter is your high frequency. So super, super high cymbals, um, you know, part of guitar, you know, metal sounds, things like that are gonna come out of the tweeter. So human hearing, we can hear, not me, not my old A, but we can, we, normal, normal young folks like the guy behind the camera can hear. 20 hertz, which is really low rumble, to 20,000 hertz, which is really, really high, okay? Um, stop rolling your eyes, techie people. I know you know this, okay? So the 20,000 hertz is the, is the tweeter, right? So it's high frequencies. And it's gonna play down that line to a certain number, depending on the tweeter. And then the mid-range driver picks up. The mid-range driver is a light material. You usually can move really, really fast. And it can kind of keep up with the tweeter, but not all the way. So on the line, the tweeter does this. Then the mid-range takes over. And there's hopefully some overlap where the tweeter can go down to a certain number, but the mid-range can go up a little higher. And then, it, then there's no gaps in the frequency range. And then the mid-range plays down all the way into mid-bass and bass range, whereas these come in. So most floor-standing speakers are going to come in come in to be being able to play really good mid bass, which is like the punchy, punchy, punchy sound of bass. And some really low, nice, big rumble noises if they're bigger speakers. These are, you know, $11,000 pair of speakers, so they can play some rumble. They can get down and dirty a little bit. Um, so you kind of have to know your equipment. Look at the menu, or look at the manual. If the manual says plays down to, and that's what that is. When you see frequency range, it'll say like 40 to 20,000. It's telling you it can play down to 40 hertz, and it can also play up to 20,000. Some speakers with super tweeters like Dolly and all of these other brands that have like a super tweeter or two tweeters, the, the super tweeter is there because it actually plays higher than 20,000 hertz or a lot higher in some cases. It plays dog whistle sounds, um, which is higher than 20,000 hertz, which is why you don't hear it. So that's the thing. Dogs hear it, we don't hear it. <clears throat> so that's the reason. But um, that they, they, they plays high frequencies so that any, um, like Aaron frequencies, they call it, or any like distortion frequencies are pushed out of the realm of hearing. So um, their theory is that now any of the errors, you don't hear it because it's pushed out of the human hearing realm of 20 to 20. Um, so that's kind of the deal there, but you have to know your stuff, right? So now they kind of lie, right? They're trying to sell you this stuff. So specs are only like to be, they should be taken not as seriously as you would think. Nice big speaker, if it says it plays down to 20 hertz, I'm telling you it does not. Play like any of the, some of the big bass demos that I told you to listen to in my last 25 minute rambling video, which I love by the way, of all my favorite demos. Listen to some of those demos um, on it and run your, run your, your, your big floor standing speakers full bore and put a big bass note through them and they're gonna fail on you. And so they're lying. Right, but most, most big speakers can get down into the 40 range, 60's comfortable. That is a nice big beefy bass note, believe it or not, 60, 60 hertz. Um, but we wanna start rolling off there, right? So, you know, go in your receiver. If, if you've done that demo and I was right and you kinda of heard your speakers make sounds they shouldn't be making, pretty easy to hear. Um, go into your receiver and cut the crossover off at 40. So now your front speakers, that number when you go into the fronts and you go into the crossovers and you put it at 40, you're telling the receiver not to send anything to your front speakers below 40 hertz. Um, so it doesn't ruin them. You can turn up the volume and they're not getting a bunch of information they're not capable of doing, okay? Very, very important home theater tip. Um, <clears throat> then your, your subwoofer, any big subwoofer can go down to 20, you know, 22, 24, 20, 19, 18, 16, you know, hertz or stuff and stuff, stuff like that. Um, 
So your subs can go down below that, but your sub can also play higher than this number two. Now a big 13 and a half inch driver, you don't want to try to make it do things that this is doing and certainly not that this is doing, right? You don't want it to go into the hundred, hundreds of Hertz. You want it to be cut off 80, you know, some of your big, like nice, like t 10 and eight inch drivers, you can start to play around with that hundred Hertz. That's a smaller driver. It can move a little faster. You, you flirt with the hundred, the, the 80, the hundred. If you have the, some of these big drivers, you got big floor standing speakers, you're like, okay, this can already go down low. That doesn't need to go above 60 now. Now you're covering the gap. This goes down to 40, that comes up to 60 and you've met in the middle and you've created a line. You don't want this, you want this or this. Um, so that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to take this base curve and you're trying to take this curve of your speaker, you're trying to meet in the middle and make as flat of a line as you can with no gaps. Um, so that's your crossover. That's understanding crossovers. Once you kind of understand that, you can get closer to understanding a starting point of calibrating your subs. I'm going to start calibrating that sub at 70. And then I'm going to play with the volume. I'm going to play a big bass note. I'm going to watch some movies. I'm going to put Ready Player One in. If my, if my voices are too bassy, I know that I've got the crossover too high. My sub's trying to do too many things. If... Um, if it's not enough, I'm going to play with the crossover. I'll flirt the crossover up a little bit on an 8-inch sub or a sub on my center channel or something like that because I want that sub to do a little more from a crossover standpoint. Then you can mess around with the volume. The volume is the last thing. After you get your the boominess taken away from the room, now play with the volume. Go up to a point that it's loud and fun but not distorting and rattling sconces and doing all this other stuff or fix your sconces or whatever if you like that kind of thing. But that's how you calibrate subs. First step is understanding your speakers. You have to understand what you bought. Um, you got some in-wall speakers, right? I, I bought some in-wall speakers. Guess what? Those in-wall speakers probably shouldn't play below 100 or 80 hertz, really, um, and probably don't in most cases. You got a big, fat, back box, like badass in-wall speaker, they can get down into the 60s and 40s probably. Um, but again, do you really need that? Not if you have a good sub. So, you know, start to flirt those crossovers, understand your speakers, understand the crossover levels, understand their capabilities and their failure points, and you won't have problems. You won't be calling your AV guy going, hey, I blew a driver. You know, people blow drivers. They're trying to get this thing to do more than it can do. Um, I know this speaker can play down to easily 40 hertz. I've heard it. it sounds super clean and great. Ported, uh, ported designs, that kind of thing. SVS can handle a whole bunch of, of a beat down. These damn things only for a thousand dollars a piece. These KLHs, dude. Even at low volumes, they had hot, they had crazy bass. So they're f phenomenal too. But just you know, understand your gear. Do I have on walls, in walls? What are these speakers really doing? Just because the manual says this skinny on wall speaker that's got three and a half inch drivers like Focals, which are great speakers it goes down to X, like it probably doesn't. So, you know, start a little higher, play some loud volume, then go to that crossover and be like, oh, I heard it start failing. You're gonna start hearing this thing crash against the, crash against the back of the driver um, or the basket, you know? It's, I mean, you can hear it fail, hear it crackle. Those are bad noises. You should stop doing it when you hear these bad noises. So you don't call your AV company and say that. So hopefully you understand a little more about how to calibrate bass and things like that. Um, you know, it can really, these methods can really be used for any subwoofer, doesn't really matter what it is. They kind of all calibrate the same and should be thought of as the same, um, piece of the puzzle. So, um, hopefully that helped you and, uh, hopefully you guys keep watching. Feel free to, uh, subscribe. It's way harder to get subscribers than viewers for some reason. I'm never going to monetize to a level I care about on YouTube. So I don't think that that matters, but we would like you to at least know when we put out new content. So. Uh, feel free to smash buttons and hit whatever and ding this and ding that and do whatever the YouTubers do. And uh, hopefully we'll see you again. Thanks. Hey guys, I just wanted to thank you for listening to whatever I was just rambling about. And of course, if you are in the Dallas area or surrounding areas and you can get here, uh, visit our showrooms in Frisco or South Lake location. And now we can help you anywhere uh, from anywhere in the country through the world's first mom and pop shop on the internet uh, called fcavsystems.com. We are very excited about this project. Uh, we're happy to bring what Theater Advice does here in Texas to everyone. Thanks for watching.